All right, and this has been the debate. Move, move when it comes to the slums as well. But uh, when it comes to the repair and land, that is the repair and land in Madari and repair and land in Runda. Yeah, for, for them, they give them a boat. But it's moved further. This is where we were talking about people who are living in Runda and they're living in repair and land. Yeah. When it comes to justice, if there's any justice in the world, this is where we want to see justice as well. They're quick off the mark to move uh, people who are living in the slums, you but serious, uh, the serious, people who are living in Runda. Serious justice in this country. Serious, serious justice in this country. Mm. Serious injustice. Serious justice in this country. Mm -hmm. Elect me as a president. <laughs> but you're not running anyway. <laughs> Right, this is what uh, Victor has drawn today. Also, I am not under siege. It's politics, and we can see the city hall. Actually, it is a city hall, as it is, and you can it see is him way. is sinking. Uh, <laughs> that is uh, Governor Sakaja, and uh, the politics of uh, the running of uh, the Nairobi County, as it were. He appeared before the Parliamentary Accounts Committee. Questions were raised, uh, of course, uh, on the running affairs of the county and the way it, the current state of the county is so far this is uh what ozone has drawn today is back and social distance please this is a government and compensation especially on the fertilizers come uh that one they don't want to hear about compensation and uh you know what is happening today also is a big day uh where we have uh the hearings beginning of uh, linturi the cs and the ouster that is the impeachment as well and it's in light of what we're going on uh, in the country, we have a message from King Charles, and it says, Mr. President, it is with great concern that my wife and I learned recently of the terrible flooding that has ravaged Kenya and the region, which continues to impact so many of your people. We can only begin to imagine the anguish of those who have lost loved ones and seen their livelihoods devastated. Our thoughts are also with those emergency workers and others who are working long hours to support those who have been so dreadfully affected. The increased unpredictability and the violence of weather systems reminds us of how utterly vital it is that the world act together and with all dispatch, dispatch to, to mitigate, to mitigate and adapt to climate, to climate change, change as we discussed during our visit to Kenya last year. The challenge of climate change and biodiversity laws falls to all of us to address at stake is our very quality of life and survival as a world. Remembering with great fondness the welcome we received on my visit last year and the friendship between our two countries, we wanted to send our deepest sympathy and affection to the people of Kenya. That, that is uh, King Charles and the message of encouragement, sympathy there to our present with, in light of what we are going through uh, so far. Yeah. Right, we continue with the discussion with our panelists here on uh, Morning uh, Prime Global today, just uh, focusing on what is happening currently uh, globally. We've been heavily talking about also uh, just going to the story history of our country and also Africa as well. But I think we wanted just to wind up on that. Uh, Professor Mashari, too, it was on you before I took a short break. And uh, uh, Ken Obongi, we can just finish up so that we can continue with the conversation. Um, well, um, to start with, Excuse it's an invitation to President Ruto to speak before the US Congress. It is an honor to him and by extension to the country. Mm. Uh, because he's the president. Uh, but it is personal to Ruto for very good reasons. Joe Biden is really interested in ensuring that uh, he has Ruto's endorsement um, for various activities like Haiti. Eh? You know, Haiti is a disaster. And, uh, for that, we have to say anything and do anything to ensure that he does not budge. And the invitation is that. Also, President Ruto has been very quick in endorsing most things that Biden would like. Uh, even when the others are wondering, what are you doing? Uh, so, two images have emerged of President Ruto. He is seemingly popular 
in Washington. In not just Washington, but with the White House. And it's popular with the West. In fact, uh, the journalist asked me about that uh, from uh, London about the two images. Um, but he seems to have problems in Africa. The image problem. He has a problem in Kenya. Mm -hmm. An image problem. So popularity out there yes. and questions here. And uh, maybe it's for Ruto and his team to wonder why is that the case? That he seems to have problems at home. Mm -hmm. And he has very... The, the Pan-African uh, talk sounds good out there. But when it comes to application, it's not there uh, where it matters in that kind of thing. Now, Tom Boyer was a darling of the, He was created by the British. Man. But you used to tell Joe Cathy, you know Joe Cathy? Mm -hmm. That uh, when a Mzungu praises you a lot, mm -hmm. find out what you are doing wrong to your mm -hmm. people. And that was Tom Boyer, and he should have known. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> when you have excessive praising from Joe Biden and company, and Joe Biden seems to be having a lot of problems anyway, find out what you are doing wrong against your people. That's the image that comes up. Um, the handling of issues has not been the best in the country. Uh, we have had ministers complain that they are doing things under dictations from the IMF and World Bank. Um, Ruta is not running this government. It's the IMF and the world. The other ones dictating what's going on. And since that is common knowledge, coming from the admission of uh, CSS, is that a really nice picture to have of a country that's supposed to be independent? Yes, the invitation to Washington is good. It's good optics, eh? Addressing, not many people are given that chance, actually, in the world to address a joint sitting of Congress. Yeah. So it's a big honor. And they should be taken for that. But beyond that, what does it mean? Does it mean that Kenya will now become deeper and deeper under the stranglehold of Washington? Does it mean that uh, we shall lose our um, ability, if we have any, to think critically and independently? We just have some instructions coming from someone, like uh, Ken was saying, some very young people from Cambridge <laughs> Come here and, and they are giving instructions to us. And then you say, this, you think it's a great idea when it is not. So the challenge, not just to Ruto, but all to the other African leaders, is to rethink what are you doing? Not to continue appearing like appendages of other forces. So the visit and the trip. Uh, to Washington and the um, honor to speak before Congress is a great thing. Commend him for that. But we also need to raise serious questions as to what its implications are. Thank you. And uh, now, as for Charles, you see he signs Charles R. Regner. Eh? <laughs> so uh, it was good of him. Eh? Uh, to, I think it's very good. We should be commended for uh, sending his sympathies to us. Uh, having problems dealing with the floods. Um, so we, we, we also thank him for th uh, considering our plight. It's, a, it's good of him. And he himself has a few serious problems. Right. Yeah. Okay, no well, uh, um, uh, uh, picking it from where uh, Prof has just left, uh, very interesting to see Charles signing uh, his message at Charles R. Uh, normally kings uh, go by one name, uh, uh, prince, I mean, king. What does that stand for? Uh, 
Uh, in, in Europe, this is because they were not taxed. The, the, the surnames are normally for mm -hmm. tax purposes. That's how it started. That's why I find it interesting that uh, Prince Charles is signing with his other name, which very few people uh, uh, know. Uh, but, um, Deepal, um, the, the opportunity that uh, President Ruta has gotten to address uh, the Joint Congress is it, really a wonderful one. And um, it's an indication of, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, effort that he has made in his uh, uh, very beginnings of a very vigorous uh, foreign policy, uh, particularly uh, towards the West. And uh, also, uh, th this is a manifestation of what we, see f uh, we saw from the very beginning. Uh, that the very uh, first countries to congratulate the president uh, when uh, he took over the reins of leadership in the country was actually London and, and, and Washington and the rest of uh, uh, Europe uh, followed. Uh, this is a score, not just uh, for him as an individual, but I also think uh, for, 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 for the country uh, 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 at large. But what is... Uh, uh, very fascinating, if you look at it in comparative terms, is um, uh, a number of countries, particularly in the west of Africa, are moving far away uh, from Washington and, and, and London and, and, and Paris. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, but as uh, probably in Eastern Africa, we are moving closer. Uh, w what is it that we have found there? Uh, uh, that Valle in Senegal has not found, uh, the president of Jad has not found, and, and the rest mm -hmm. of the young, uh, energetic, uh, I mean, young people who are equally energetic like our president. You've not found favor. Uh, are not finding favor. Then the question will be, why are we finding favor in Western capitals that these other countries within the African continent are not finding? And what does that mean then? to Pan-Africans then. Uh, Prof. Is Professor Mazrui who talked about the African presidents either being Pan-Africanists or what? The other? Pan, pan, uh, Euro, Euro-Africanism. Yeah, 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 Euro-Africanists. Yeah, yeah. uh, Euro-Africanists. Uh, so are we coming out at, as uh, very good, excellent Euro-Africanists in Mazrui's conception? Or are we promoting Pan African issues. Th that's probably the question uh, our framers of Kenya's foreign policy towards the West need to be thinking about, even as the president has had this golden opportunity uh, to address uh, uh, you know, the Congress. Number two, again, if I may uh, go back to uh, 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 Mazrui again, Professor Ali Mazrui, in, in, in one of his writings, uh, we'll continue talking about him, he's late now, but he was quite a legendary when it comes to the generation of interesting ideas. He talked about the recolonization of Africa. And, and, and all of us condemned him, and called him a neo-imperialist. Uh, but what he had in mind is that um, Africa needed to find a way of reducing all these tiny little countries. Uh, for example, the ECOWAS, uh, will coalesce around Nigeria uh, and, and the form of a federation under the leadership of Nigeria. In Eastern Africa, uh, you know, all countries coalesce around Kenya and form a federation around it. In Southern Africa, of course, South Africa. In North Africa, you talked about uh, Egypt. That is what the Americans are tapping into. Uh, you know, they go to West, uh, Southern Africa, they pick South Africa. They come to Eastern Africa, they pick Kenya. They go to West Africa, they pick Nigeria. I, I just wish we could have listened to our own son, uh, the legendary Professor Ari Masui then. Africa could be stronger uh, than uh, it is today. So what is the way out? Uh, Professor Kawancha talked about uh, what we loosely call positive engagement. Uh, I don't care whether we are going east or west, but I care whether we are taking care of our interests, both as Kenyans or as Kenya, and, and also Africans. Uh, if we are dancing to the East, uh, what is there for Africa and Kenya for us? If we are dancing to the West, uh, what is there for uh, Kenya and Africa? 
But if we are dancing uh, to build ourselves, uh, individual leadership is transient. Uh, the other day it was Uhuru, before that it was uh, Kibaki, before that it was Moi. It is now Ruto. Tomorrow could be somebody else. Uh, maybe mm. one of us around the table, I don't know. Mishmiwa has been uh, talking in ways that suggest that he is a serious contender to this post. But uh, we wish him well. But whoever that will be, let's look at what one could call Kenya's national interests and Africa's continental interest. Fantastic. Let's uh, leave it at that and find out also what is happening within our region where South Sudan's peace talks between the government and the holdout groups will begin on May 10th in Nairobi, signaling a new step to end perennial disruption to the country's rebuilding. A series of behind-the-scenes consultations that have been going on in Kenya, of course, the uh, capital of Nairobi, to bring the government of South Sudan and the holdout groups of the negotiation table seems to have broken the impasse. Kenya's mediation is led by former Army Commander Lazarus Sumbeyo, the man who also successfully mediated the 2005 Sudan Comprehensive Peace Agreement, CPA, that helped set the stage for South Sudan's later independence in 2011. These groups are called holdouts because they refused to sign on the 2018 peace deal mediated by the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, Egan, that helped end a civil war between President Salva Kiir's government and various armed groups that splintered continually since 2013. And uh, Chadians lined up on Monday to vote three years after military leader Muhammad Idris Deby seized power in the first presidential election in Africa's Sahel region since a wave of coups. Some 8.5 million people registered to vote. Provincial results are expected by May the 21st and final results by June the 5th. If no candidate wins more than 50% of the votes, a runoff will be held on June the 22nd. Some opposition members and civil society groups have called for a boycott, citing concerns about possible vote rigging. That has raised fears of potential violence. Some observers did not get their accreditation before the vote and were not given any reason for the refusal, according to Citizens Alliance for Elections, that is ASSET, a platform that monitors the poll. A military court in Eastern Congo on Friday sentenced eight soldiers to death for, wait for it, cowardice and other crimes linked to <coughs> fleeing the battlefield as the government struggles to contain violence and attacks in the mineral rich area where many armed groups operate. In March, Congo lifted a more than 20 year moratorium, I should say, on the death penalty, stating that those guilty of treason and espionage were able to get away without proper punishment. Human rights organizations criticize the decision. Moise Hangi, a civil society activist, told uh, the media that instead of repairing our security apparatus, these kinds of decisions will increasingly weaken our army and make those on the lines of defense more fearful. And in a diplomatic move aimed at ending the conflict, Egypt and Kuwait announced their rejection of foreign interference in the ongoing conflict in Sudan and called on the warring parties to stop the fighting that has been raging in the country for a year, for a year right now. This rejection came in a joint uh, a statement issued at the conclusion of a visit of the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Michal al Hamad al Jaber al Sebah to Egypt on Wednesday. The joint statement marks the first time two Arab countries have publicly condemned regional interference in the conflict. There are strong accusations against the UAE and Iran for supporting both sides.
All right, we just want to comment on those issues right now, and uh, I want just to focus on you also, pre uh, I almost call you President Peter Kagwanja. Maybe mm. that is prophetic. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But you see, you're sitting to, next to a presidential candidate. No, no, no. You never know. <laughs> when we were talking about uh, the rotation of presidency, uh, the likelihood of having uh, you know, <laughs> a Somali president also is... is, is really should declare his interest He right should, should declare his interest. <laughs> Let's, let's look at Farah right now and ask him, Farah, from the deepest recesses of your heart, yes. are you sure there are no ambitions? Uh, to run for the presidency. <laughs> to run for the presidency. I, I reserve my comments. <laughs> that speaks a lot. <laughs> anyway, Pete, uh, I reserve my comments. Oh, Professor Kakuancha, yeah, the, the I, South I, Sudan I, 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 peace I, I talks. I think you, you were right. In you, the, it was not a slip of the tongue. <laughs> So, Sudan. I mean, uh, uh, I, South I, Sudan. I, I, South Sudan. I, I, th I think we need to treat South Sudan within the larger context of the fluidity of of, of, of the politics in the region, where we are moving from peace processes to peace processes to peace processes and we're not seeing the end of it uh, and at the beginning of this show I think a statement was made that I think by uh, Farah, that uh, there are people who benefit from insecurity in Africa and that profiteering in our security need to be really highlighted <coughs> it's not to debate as usual uh, that we have we have seen now the resurgence of you know violence in, Af in many parts of Africa, from yeah. Congo, uh, and, and at, the, at a certain stage, particularly after 2000, we, we had seen the decline of that. And at that time, it corresponded to a uh, decline in great power conflict uh, globally, uh, particularly after the end of the Cold War. Uh, and, and therefore, we start seeing emphasis on the rule of law, order, and so on. And, and, and that way, it meant that uh, Western countries were ready now to transact with African countries on a level uh, playing field. When you use you weaponize conflict as an economic, uh, you know, tool uh, to gain uh, advantage, there are a certain number of things you do. First, you ensure that the government does not tax you. Now, two, you ensure that you have a free a way of entering into these so-called ungoverned spaces and, do, what's and they do what you want and three you are able to arm yourself to the teeth yes. in order to get to those places yes. and that's why we have seen uh, the resurgence of you know mercenaries on the continent and uh, people keep on mentioning Wagner like it is the only mercenary group. In fact, Ma Wagner is one of the weakest. It's yes, only yes, that yes, it is yes, in the in the Sahel. Yes. It is doing a job where yes, others yes. are not doing this kind of job. And two, it is in the French West Africa. Go to Mo Mo Mozambique. Go to uh, Equatorial Guinea. Yeah. Go to these countries, and you yeah. find all manner of uh, you know uh, mercenaries. In Western, uh, in West, uh, mostly Western, yes. and there are very few. Yes. non-Western yes. mercenaries yes. on this continent. Yes. Uh, so we, we need to put that and then ask why the question why South Sudan has not moved mm -hmm. from the time of independence, that yeah. we have been moving from one peace talk. We don't even know we, at which stage we are. Now what we are celebrating is simply the coming together of the smaller groups mm -hmm. Uh, to basically, uh, you know, work with the government that is in power now, yeah. the Salva Kiel uh, government, <coughs> and, and that's the, the, the context of this. But does that does that change the whole context of the instability of South Sudan, uh, which is next to Sudan now Africa's most unstable country as we speak, and the most, uh, you know, the one with the worst humanitarian crisis as we speak. So my comment is that this is a positive step because. Uh, South Sudan is Africa's youngest country, uh, which has grown the proverbial rotten teeth. In other words, started fight, fighting the day you were born, uh, which is very unfortunate. But South Sudan is also super rich in oil. It is super rich in other minerals, gold and so on, and, and hardwood and so on. And it's also very fertile in terms of Ariborand uh, because of it, you know, where it is within the Nile uh, and so on. And, and it's not a surprise that we have seen a lot of interest in South Sudan in, the, in that particular case, particularly because of oil. And the 
it is important that Kenya has put its uh, best foot forward because uh, General Subaiwo is the one who has been is a seasoned uh, negotiator within that political region. Let's talk about this. This is an issue about merit, so you can beef him up with other uh, more you know uh, you know uh, knowledgeable people in terms of uh, the academics and other things. But at least in terms of experience, he has a huge experience, and therefore he's the right person for the for the job. Uh, the big question is, South Sudan is now headed for election. Uh, is this election going to lure back all these gains that have been made, or is it going to improve on the country? Is democracy the way it is conceived, conceived in the West superior to a kind of a negotiated order in countries in transition like this one? We must be, begin to accept that in countries like South Sudan, uh, where consciousness is already there, this is a country where people say they are more generals than soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, with a tongue in the cheek. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the reason for that is because every clan and every group has its own mm -hmm. uh, generals uh, or in, in, in ethnic group. So, so South Sudan is deeply ethnicized. Thank you. And then how do we move to a democracy uh, in the competitive sense of democracy as we, as we go this? Because I am taking that these talks are about consolidating unity in South Sudan as we head towards democracy. Mm -hmm. Right. For my, 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 my big question to Professor Kagwanja is that <laughs> where in Africa has democracy worked? Mm -hmm. <laughs> has it worked in Kenya? Uh, well, some modicum of democracy has worked in Kenya, we will say. Modicum of certain stability when the elite always negotiate and agree on, on you know, the, the uh, democracy. When, did you, when could you say which election, except the first election of 1963, could you say was free, fair, and verifiable in every sense? Yes. Kenyatta, Kenyatta did not have an opponent until he died. There can, there can never be free, fair, just, whatever, all this. For yes, us, yes. Can I, can I just finish? For democracy. Well, can I just finish? Uh, well, one was in, in, in 2002. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, 2002 was probably the best. That's what I'm saying. It was yeah. the transition at that time, but even then, even then, there were certain areas, the so-called Kano zones, where people were ignored. Mm -hmm. Kano just brought in his own people. But of course, uh, it was a transition, and uh, Moi did not have to have another term. And uh, well, there were two candidates coming from the same backyard. One was the godfather of the other. You call them godfathers, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah? One was the one who named Kibaki is the one who gave Uhuru the name Uhuru. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and basically, these were two, like a son and a father, who were running for this. So it was a kind of a, a softball. You know, it, it wasn't such a serious thing. None of like what it uh, normally traditionally happens. Mm. But let me, let me tell you one thing. What do the African masses did? Take a country, he, he was in Eritrea the other day. There's never been an election in Eritrea. But it's the only country that's not on food aid. It's the only country that's not in a debt crisis. You get my point. It's the only country which, uh, at least, uh, I don't know about the SDGs, but the MDGs, they, they, they achieved most of the MDGs, particularly four and five, which we never achieved ourselves. It's the only country where once you are above the age of 60 on a social welfare, it doesn't matter whether you are working for the government or not before, you still get your amount of money, which is able to take care of those uh, old people. So, 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 you know, and, and it, has, it has withstood all efforts, these are nine different ethnic communities, two different religions, 50-50 down the middle, that essentially would have had a problem if it's, not, if it's not for the fact that there was a very serious and a very good and, and basically what you call a, a southern leadership. But there was never been an election. So could you say that an election, look at Ethiopia, for example, for the longest, they tried to have these pseudo elections mm. where Meles used to come with 80%, 90% what you call approval rating, when they had lost and allowed a nation of only 4.5 million people to load over 115 million other Ethiopians. And uh, this young uh, uh, prince comes with the same dream now called Abi, and he literally wants to do exactly the same thing. He says he had dreamt that he was a king. So he's already building himself a palace, palace I'm told. Yeah, uh, State-of-the-art exactly. palace back at home. But, but the West is happy with him. For the longest, Meles was the darling of the West. So the West never cares for human rights. Well, the West never cares for democracy. West never cares for a free and what they call a, a, a fair trade. It wants to exploit all these things and it doesn't want you to have those facilities because 
I watched one Indian minister who was told, but can there be equality? He said, no, there can only be equality between equals. Yes. You, you know what I mean? There can be equality between equals. At that time, he was saying that Muslims are not equals to Hindus in India. This is a sub-race. This is a, a race that they should just be happy that they're living. The West is exactly the same. I mean, they still have that racist attitude. Mm -hmm. Certain practices can only be the same way. They used to say that, you know, we come to Christianize them. We come to civilize them. That's why we are enslaving them. We are colonizing them. They are beasts, they are bestials. That's what they said about the Indians when they went to uh, the, 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 the Americas. That's what they said about Africans and the black people when they enslaved us. That's what they said about everybody that they wanted to take. Nothing has changed since the days of Christopher Columbus. Actually, it has become, it's been perfected. Look at what's happening in Gaza right now. Look at what's happening in Gaza right now. They're literally trying to destroy and kill everybody in a certain area because they want to take the country. And these are settlers who came in from the different parts of the world to take over the lands of indigenous people. And by the way, uh, uh, with the, the, for a moment, they almost became, they were almost given Kenya, certain parts of Kenya, <laughs> almost given uh, uh, Uganda, Jews, yes, <laughs> Jews yeah. Uganda. Well, so, no, actually, Wasingishu. Uh, Wasingishu. They, were, yeah, yeah, they, were, yeah, they yes. were going to be given all that, you know, the so-called white highlands, yeah. you know, all that, basically, because they're the chosen people of God. The rest are supposed to serve them. We are supposed to serve, and they can rape us, they can kill us, they can do anything. And they do that to their fellow whites. Now, think about where is the place, space or the place of a black man in that kind of racism within the white, what you call race itself. And then, what did he say? What did Netanyahu say the other day? He said, as soon as he's over with, uh, with I'm talking about it, as soon as he's over with uh, Gaza and, and Palestine, he's coming to Africa to come and liberate Africa. Basically, what it means is that the West wants to use Israel to do exactly what they could not do to us, to us again. You know what I mean? But you're so going off the rails. Eh? Yeah. You're going no, off no, the rails. No, let's, go, the, let's go back to South Sudan. But I'm uh, going to South Sudan. So what I'm trying to tell you is that now what we're going to go through, I don't care whether it's going to be a negotiated uh, settlement of some kind. Democracy, no democracy. Human rights, African values, Sumbewa should bring these people together and decide they're going to have a power sharing format. For us, every time we go for an election, we have a crisis. And then we fall back on the traditional, old, you know, African way of resolving some of these things and somehow get to get along with it for the next five years. You, you see what I mean? And every time we have a crisis, every time we have a crisis, a little bit of resources changes hands. We agree on something. Look, you've stolen these votes from me. Uh, can I have a compensation for it? And then some compensation is done. You know what I mean? <laughs> the same way within the... <laughs> so let him work out something. I don't care what he works out. Between Riyak Machar, Salva Kiir, and all the other actors, let's have some kind of a stability and an understanding of some kind of a transition that does not necessarily have to bring into, 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 into the equation any outside forces, particularly the developed Western forces. Not, no Europe, no America, no Chinese, I don't care, wherever it is. But let's have a serious indigenous African way. Then, the biggest issue, the elephant in the, in the, in the room, the resources. The Americans want the resources, the West wants the resources, everybody wants the resources. So at the end of the day, they will come to do a bit of an arm twisting to you Thank also. You. Yeah, so how much we're going to withstand as Kenyans right now, and, and, and decide we're going to tell them not get out and say, wait, Mandela would have done. This is also debatable. Mm -hmm. But these are the, the issues. Let us talk about the depth and the width of the issues that come into play. Not, not, not this, you know, the, you know very, very superficial uh, club traps, human rights, democracy, uh, all those kind of things, power share. But let's go into a serious way in which we discuss the real issues in there. The real issues, the resources. Yeah, Thank Sudan you. has got serious resources there. And the real issue is that who are the forces who are behind this conflict so that they can access these resources the way they want easily. All right. So, 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 so Sudan it seems to be like uh, the proverbial go, uh, Gordian knot. Mm. That everyone could you, not really untie that particular Gordian knot until Alexander the Great really came up and just cut it. Since now there's been a cutting, don't we need Alexander now no. to come and cut this Gordian knot? Uh, because we, we it need seems some good <laughs> Africans, not Alexander. <laughs> some good Africans is the name uh, of, of so Alexander you, Soto. No. What I'm saying, of course, I'm talking uh, metaphorically here. Yeah. Uh, because it seems for donkey as we are still stuck with South Sudan, yep. no, and there is there's a, there's a rising we, wave of we change have, um, with Kong, uh, DRC, with no. Somalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. In South Sudan, we have Ethiopia, a good man Ethiopia, oh. uh, running the show or trying to, General Sumbayo. At least he was there 
and he had some success. Some success. He's also aware of where he failed in the first round. And that's the good thing. Because he's aware of what went wrong with his work. So the hope is that now he has a second chance. He will avoid the mistakes he made when he crafted the first one eh, that brought independence. And um, there's a time I talked to him and he said, yeah, there were things that could have been done. So he has a chance to do it better. Now one of the things about South Sudan, at the time they got the independence, because there was that uh, euphoria and all those kind of CPA things. first, yeah. They were advised, that I know for a fact. Mm -hmm. That they needed to have a national dialogue to involve all the South Sudanese as to what it is was ailing them, was likely to heal them, how they can come together and be one nation. And that some of the things we are seeing probably will not have been there because those people who felt left out in the CPA were not given a chance to be part of the, the new thing. Remember one person was pointing out that do not let Juba become the new Khartoum. You centralize everything and you neglect everything. Apparently, as um, Sava King and Riyad Mashal were fighting, there were those areas that didn't know what they were fighting about. They were not part of that. So, Sumbeyo has a chance to try and rectify some of those mm -hmm. uh, errors that happened in that time and after. Actually, concern is what happened after. He had not thought about the aftermath of success. So what is it that needs to be done? First of all, to bring the South Sudanese together to think as one. And if he succeeds in that, then the aftermath of that success, how to deal with it, is a very tricky thing. It's not um, something you can just wish-wash. And this comes in as a serious policy matter, because it's a policy issue from the top, not talking uh, here and there. Though, though. So there are a lot of thinking needs to go into it, and persuasion and all those kind of things. And um, let me just plug in something. Little I saw in uh, Asmara, visiting a, a yard of the old military vehicles. And there were these little children begging. Yeah? The interesting thing is they were not begging for money. They asked to be given pens. Mm. And that, that struck some of us. They want pens. Who? Mm. The children. Yeah, the children. children. Four, five, six, seven years. Which implies that the value they put on education. Yeah? So back to South Sudan, it needs a lot of serious thinking. And Sumbayo is the right man to, to deal with that. Mm. So we trade uh, uh, pen for, for guns. Uh, maybe yeah. this is what you're trying to insinuate yeah. uh, at the end of the day. <laughs> so a bit of education, a bit some education. will go a, 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 a great we Provide way. a lot of pens and paper. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. I, uh, thanks, uh, Deepal, and I uh, appreciate the comments uh, made by my colleagues. Uh, I said in this forum last time, uh, or I described South Sudan as the, the, the sick man of uh, the Horn of Africa, or Eastern Africa, if, if, if you want. And uh, some people are not very happy with the description, but I still maintain uh, uh, that. that. Uh, the, the, the challenge uh, the, the country is facing is uh, one that is related and the prof has hinted at it. The transition uh, was overwhelmed by euphoria. And uh, the architects of South Sudan were not keen enough to realize that uh, after the euphoria, they had a country to, uh, to, 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 to run. Uh, the old uh, African habits crept in, uh, power struggle based on uh, uh, ethnicity. Uh, and um, uh, uh, if I remember my political science well, 
uh, is uh, Professor Emmanuel Wallenstein, who analyzed African politics uh, and said uh, <coughs> the, the stability of an African country depends on how it manages its affairs in the first decade of independence. Uh, the ones that did not manage that decade very well, they continued to have a uh, very unstable environment subsequently. The ones that did re relatively well, uh, you know, emerged fairly as a stronger uh, polities and stronger e e economies. Uh, I, I, th I think Sudan, uh, South Sudan, uh, belongs to the latter case. They, they have not managed this transition uh, very well. Uh, whether General Sombeyo will succeed where he failed the last time, uh, there is that high possibility, because he's a very experienced uh, peacemaker. Uh, but what we hope is that um, he, he will go beyond uh, the kind of prescription that they had uh, last time. Uh, hive yourself off from the north of Sudan uh, and then put arrangements, put structures of state uh, together, have a strong military and all that. And I'm not surprised uh, because uh, uh, General Sombe is a military man. Yeah. And, uh, Prof, I don't know whether you will agree with me. Uh, we, we say in my language that uh, if a hammer is the only tool you have, chances are very high of seeing everything as a nail. Uh, you know, a military man is bound to see the situation through military eyes. Um, uh, peace and stability is important, uh, but how to bring it uh, uh, forth uh, is equally important. Some sections of South Sudan, and Prof alluded to it, feel left out. Uh, we, we know much about the Nuel and, and the Dinka, but there are so many other uh, you know, ethnic groups in the composition of what we call Sudan that nobody uh, talks about. Uh, Mishmiwa talks about the uh, international interests uh, that are competing for the resources of Sudan. So how do you manage the cost of uh, natural resources in, 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 in Sudan? Many other African countries have failed to do that. How will we do it differently so that the situation in Sudan turns out? And, and, and oil is uh, uh, something sometimes you wonder whether you will want your country to have it. Uh, because every African country that has oil, uh, gold and diamonds is bound to uh, get into chaos. So, so, so I, I, I think um, uh, General Sombeyo's work is well cut. Whether he will avoid the mistakes they made earlier or not uh, will actually yet to be seen. All right. Mm. Maybe we can also, to, uh, can I see we have a little few minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want us to begin on Sudan. We can actually carry out uh, that next week so that we can get our closing remarks yes. sufficiently on this as well. Uh, yes. Prof. Kagwanja? I just wanted to add two things uh, relating to South Sudan and what it means uh, for peace, stability and democracy in Africa. Uh, obviously, South, South Sudan is a, case, is a typical case of African countries that have failed to transit from liberation to governing, post colonial governing. And, and, and there are very, very many countries that really don't make that transition. That you have, uh, um, SPLA was a liberation movement. Mm. Can it become a governing moment, movement? And uh, I, I, I mean, I witnessed that debate in South Africa how to transform the ANC from a liberation movement to a, govern, to a government. And the ANC issued a, a, a statement called Ready to Govern. Mm. And the ready to govern uh, document was simply preparing South, uh, the, the, the ANC on how to govern. South Sudanese liberation movement has failed basically to move to the governing phase of, of the country. And I think that's where we need to start looking at it. Second are the interveners, the Sobeyos and others. What are the tools they are using? They are using what we call liberal peace. Uh, and liberal peace assumes that. Uh, we are Western democracies and we are Western. And therefore, we, they start by what we call talks about talks. You, you, you smooth around what now has been happening. Uh, then you announce that you, have, you, have, you are ready now to talk. And you go onto the table and you even appoint a mediator the way they have done with General Suboyo. Then the talks go 
Where are the talks heading? In most cases, when the situation is so freed, they will always recommend power sharing. We have gone that, through that ourselves. The Serena process took, uh, took us through the power sharing. And the power sharing is supposed to help you craft a constitution. And after the constitution, you have elections. And after elections, then you are supposed to have democracy and now move to the stage called happily ever after, which doesn't always happen. Now, in South Sudan is a victim of these two uh, alien ideas. I call them alien ideas because they don't take into account where the country is coming from. And I think we need to think very, very seriously about South Sudan in terms of the, the sources of the causes of instability. And the causes of instability is not poverty in South Sudan, it's not. Uh, it is, it is a, a whole legacy of the conflict with, with the Sudan itself and the conflict within itself. And therefore, what Sudan need at this juncture are what we call conf I mean, a kind of general talk within the Sudanese people themselves across the country. And that is a stage they have refused to take. That you must have talks. If Kenya did not have the bombers of Kenya, if we don't go, go through those motions and make our own mistakes, manu manipulate each other, and then we know that we have to live together, we will not have gotten the new constitution that we have gotten. So South Sudan need uh, serious talks that should be reduced to a national constitution and a constitution that defines now the, the new citizen in the new Sudan. And now help translate uh, the, 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 the liberation moment mm -hmm. into uh, the governing moment in that country. Can we get a closing remarks? Yes. Farah, uh, let's uh, begin for, with you. For the, for the longest... So that I don't cut you short when you For begin. the longest, the issue was Arabized North, against the Christian South. Christian South. That was the narrative that was created by the colonialist and the Western world. And the whole reason was basically to see how they could get their hands on the resources. John Garan, whom I personally knew myself, never wanted the two Sudans to split. He was going to become the president for a united Sudan. But because the West had his own desire, we went ahead, we played along ourselves in the peace process, and we facilitated for them, for the, for the North and the South, to separate. They separated, and everybody thought, now that they have separated, peace will come. Pura, peace will come. It never came. Peace was become as elusive as ever. First of all, they killed John Gran. Everybody knows John Gran was, 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 was taken out. They did a helicopter. Yeah? Yes, mm. in a helicopter. <laughs> he died in a helicopter. Yes, he was taken out. 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 Because that is the man. Michelle, who, uh, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle was also taken out also in a, in a, in a plane. Helicopter. In a, in Michelle a helicopter. was also died, yes. died in a helicopter. Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. So anybody who was a Pan Africanist, who basically, I think it was only Sankara, they came and yeah. uh, shot him in cold blood. Yeah. In cold blood. And of course, uh, and, 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 and Lumumba, Patrice Lumumba. And Patrice Lumumba. And others, yes. Because this man wanted to create a new Africa. Not only was is he going to unite the two Sudanese, but he was going to become a serious threat to the so-called Western entrenched interests in the new African continent. What did they do? South again plunges into another problem, which is what is there now. The North, which thought that once they get rid of the South, they will have no problem, they can get along together, the rest of them, because they're all Muslims, mm -hmm. has got a problem and will not be split only into two countries. It's likely to be split into more than three countries. Mm. Father, we have to go. You, you, you understand my point? Mm -hmm. So the issue is, we, we were basically facilitators for a Western conspiracy in the way we worked about the CPA, the Comprehensive Peace exactly. Agreement of the time. We're still going to become tools, tools. Let me tell you one thing. I have all the respect for Simbio, yes, but we're still going to become tools for that same Western interest. They'll never allow it. They want to get their hands on the resources. They, they will never let it go. And this has been what informs all the conflicts in the continent for the last 70 years or 60 years. Thank you. So my position is that we have got to have a new conversation as Africans. Fantastic. In Let's all the conflicts that. that are there. Thank you. And, 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 and the thank you. Thank you. So we played into the books as well yes. in splitting uh, Sudan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we, we, to, to the, whole thing, the whole thing yeah. was a scripted. 
it was there, do this, do this, thank you. do this. Thank you, thank and you, thank you. And, and a few of us right. got, got, got what they call a bad Zavi AI into even those days. Thank you, Farah. Your closing remarks, 30 yeah. seconds. Professor okay, Mushara, yeah. my music is up. Maybe Farah should set up his presidential team committee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The committee is already here. The, the, Farah Mali, you don't need to go far. <laughs> it's all set up here. The, 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 the and and it's, it's so well spread, but of course I need somebody from Lo Yanza, somebody from Western Kenya, and somebody from other parts of the country. We, we are here. <laughs> to, create yeah, a, yeah. to create the team. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the country okay. needs need a lot. That's with a light touch, okay. Yeah. Right. The country needs a lot of players. You know, seriously. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank not you. just the country, but the region, thank because you. of these floods, thank you. which are very unusual. Thank you. So that um, we can recover. We can thank climb, you. Uh, blame climate change yes. and all those things, but something more serious is happening. Has to be done. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Ken Obongi, your closing remarks? Uh, two uh, quick ones. One is uh, the, the floods. Let's take have. one, please. Uh, okay. The, the Southern Sudan um, solution, uh, I mean, uh, solutions. To southern Sudan problems is our hope, and we are optimistic that Sombeyo will secure that. Thank you. Let's leave it at that. Professor Kagwanja, finally. Y yes, I, th I think we need to give uh, General Suboyo all the support he needs. And uh, he, uh, it has been said he has run from his m mistakes. Let's assume that he's going to give us an authentic government in South Sudan. Fantastic. Thank you. And by the way, we have one of his students, Anita saying uh, good morning Dival. i follow your morning prime show on ktn quite informative and quality of your guests and reach the discussion ombongi was my lecturer at university of nairobi conflict and peace